The anatomy of the larynx is very important and at the same time it can be a little bit tricky. So let's review here a little bit more about the anatomy of the larynx. Starting with the epiglottis, here the structure in orange, anterior to this is going to be the hyoid bone. As we move in fear, we're going to see the aryepiglottic fold right there. And this is pretty much continuous with the epiglottis. The only difference is that this ones are kind of coming posterior and lateral to the epiglottis. Right here, you see that our cartilage changed from the hyoid bone to the thyroid cartilage. So you know we're moving below. And I think this right here, it's an important um, part where we need to identify where we are in terms of the vocal cords. So this is probably the most important anatomy. And if you get this part of the anatomy, you'll get everything else. So we have the ventricle here. That's pretty much a line dividing the false vocal cords from the true vocal cords. So we make that line there. And then from that line, we measure one centimeter and we draw another imaginary line here. And this space outlined by these two lines is gonna be the glottis or the glottic space. That being said, anything above this space is gonna be the supraglottic space. Anything below this space, namely here, is gonna be the infraglottic space. So now we have defined all the compartments of the larynx, and this is gonna be the same way for purposes of cancers. So any cancer that arises from this region is gonna be classified as either supraglottic, glottic, or infraglottic. What this means and why this is important is that most of the cancers in these regions, which are gonna be squamous cell carcinomas, are gonna happen in the supraglottic space or the glottic space. The infraglottic space is much more less common to have any type of cancers in this region. So let's take a look at this again. So as we move further down, we're gonna see our, our false vocal cords. There they are. Some patients have them actually a little bit bigger, more prominent. They're gonna seem more hypodense uh, when compared to the true vocal cords, as we go, we keep going down, those are still the false vocal cords. You'll notice when we when we get to the true uh, vocal cords, you notice the difference. So here, you can see they're a little bit, the ones in yellow, okay? They're a little bit thicker. The density is a little bit different. And those are going to be the true vocal cords, okay? Here we have the original cartilage, so those are the cartilage immediately posterior to the vocal cords, and we go a little bit more posterior and more inferior, we're going to have the cricoid cartilage, another important anatomic landmark. So in this area, when we get the when we get to the true vocal cords, if we have a neoplasm here, the squamous cell carcinoma, we're going to want to assess whether it's invading the thyroid cartilage the retinoid cartilage or the cricoid cartilage. So all those three cartilage are very important and depending whether the tumor has invaded or not the cartilage is gonna determine staging. So it's very, very important to know exactly what cartilage is involved and if it's truly involved or just uh, having some sclerosis from inflammatory changes. So the best sign to know if it's truly involved is gonna be having tumor either before and after the cartilage, that way we know the cartilage has been truly invaded. But sometimes we have some sclerotic margins or sclerotic changes of the cartilage. That is really not specific for invasion. It may or may not have invasion, but we need to know that that's not a specific sign. So we have to be very careful with that sign. Here again is a cricoid cartilage. We can see it a little bit better. And you, you can see it goes all the way around, okay, completely around. Now, when we talk about vocal cords, if we have a vocal cord injury, we're gonna be looking for three main things. We're gonna look for a dilated piriform sinus. Let me show you where the piriform sinuses are. So right here, those are the piriform sinus. Again, it looks a little bit smaller in this case, but it's gonna depend on the timing of the imaging, and it's gonna depend on the patient, but this really, just a recess lateral to the epiglottis. So that's the piriform sinus. So that's one thing that's gonna be asymmetric when we have vocal cord paralysis or injury. The vocal cord that's injured is gonna be medial, I'm gonna look more medial, at least in the acute phase. 
Um, and also the retinoid cartilage posterior, this one I show you guys here, is going to be also displaced. So those are the three main things that we look for when we're assessing for vocal cord injury. That being said, I wanted to also to mention that while in the literature, lesions from the hypopharynx, well, we have the larynx and we have the hypopharynx, lesions from the hypopharynx, since they're most of the time they're going to be squamous cell carcinomas, they have been lumped together with laryngeal um, neoplasms or lesions. But uh, just to define where you know the neoplasm arises from either the piriform sinus, the aripiglottic fold, or the procedural wall, the hypopharynx, those three regions are specifically uh, neoplasms of the hypopharynx, different from the ones we talked about, the larynx, that we were just dividing it between supraglottic, glottic, and infraglottic spaces. You might tell me, well, you know, it seems like the piriform sinus is really part of the supraglottic space, and I'll have to agree with you. However, I think this mainly a matter of, of definition and being a little bit technical and specific about the terms. So for all, you know, for, for practical purposes, it might not make a big difference, but those three areas, um, we're going to consider them as being uh, neoplasms from the hypopharynx.